I got into art when I was a kid. Uh, I was fascinated by graffiti art. When I was a kid, I uh, one time I was in my dad's truck and I saw this big graffiti that I'd never seen before. And they said Chaka, in huge letters, and I was fascinated by that. And uh, I got into graffiti art uh, in the early 90s. And uh, I would, you know, draw here and there and try to do my graffiti and books and stuff like that. So I was always fascinated by art. Um, I had books, uh, Van, old Van Gogh books that I happened to come across. And uh, I would stare at the I will stare at the images, and that's how I got into art. We're, we're in uh, Boyle Heights. We're in the east area of Los Angeles. You know, this, this community here is kind of tucked away, away from uh, the gentrification so far. Um, my oldest sister, she grew up around here, and uh, I would come visit her over here a lot, and. You know, being around these people is the same people that, you know, it makes me feel like home around here. And uh, the studio is located uh, kind of in the heart of that area. Um, and when I come here, you know, I paint, I feel at home. And uh, it, it makes it easier for me to paint when I feel comfortable in an environment like this. And, uh, yeah, some, it could be rough, but... Um, you know, it feels, feels like home. You know, I've been influenced. I have an older sister, Emilia Flor Ramirez. And uh, at first, you know, I, 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 I used to like doing my graffiti, you know, my, my characters and stuff like that. You know, it, it made me feel, you know, good about, you know, some of the paintings that I would do, and characters and stuff. It didn't have no meaning behind it, you know? And I've seen my sister for many years and uh, doing some, uh, some research, I was, you know, studying on my own and stuff like that. Um, I started moving into the Chicano art, you know, because, you know, I, I am a Chicano, I'm Mexican-American, and it just felt so natural to paint, you know, uh, paint my people and paint, you know, people that have no voice sometimes, you know, uh, lost loved ones, and uh, it, it makes me feel good, and I know it makes people feel good when they see the art. You know, being around this community, um, you see the people that live here, and you see their everyday struggle. You know, it, it inspires you to, you know, to paint them. I, I, I like to paint people that have been forgotten in society, have been oppressed in society. I like uh, to paint people that have been marginalized and uh, forgotten in the past, but, you know, the people are still here. Socially, uh, in, in modern times, we, we still manage to survive all this uh, gentrification. Um, even though uh, the, the economy is uh, really rough on them, they still manage to somehow make a living. And uh, I get inspired to paint these people uh, because of their struggle. You know, I, I like to give them a voice through my art. Um, they can't, they don't have the power sometimes, you know, there's language barriers. They can't go out and speak for themselves in, in modern, modern society where they have the power. You know, with our new president, you know, a lot of their, their voices have been, you know, shut down. So I guess through my art, I feel empowered by painting some certain images that speaks for themselves. I don't have to speak for, for them. The art itself speaks for them. It's very powerful sometimes. And uh, that's how it affects me when I when I paint around this neighborhood. A lot of people, yeah, they uh, they they uh, trip out on like, you know, I'm not a full-time artist. I want to be a full-time artist, but I got bills to pay too. You know, in this modern society, you can't, you know, I can't just be a, an artist and, you know, try to survive in, in this economy. So I'm also an iron worker. Uh, I, uh, I work in uh, these buildings in downtown LA, Beverly Hills. Um, I'm a full-time iron worker and uh, after a rough days of work, I come home with a shower and you know, I do my art. And I 
I do my sketches, I prepare for different ideas that I, I would like to do and paint. And, uh, you know, sometimes I have dreams and I paint my dreams, the images in my head. Uh, I put them on canvas and then, you know, it helps me sleep, it helps me uh, heal myself. Art, art heals people. With this picture, you know, I'm, I'm painting a school kid, you know, a local Latino Mexican kid from from this community, I guess, you know, in my head. I don't know this kid, but it, uh, to me, it, he's going to represent the community. He's, he's a school kid, you know. People think that all oh, kids hate school around here, or, you know. They, they don't they don't need all that, you know. And some of these kids, they really like school, you know. They just need somebody to believe in them, you know. These kids uh, are our future. They're your future policemen, your future doctors, you know, they need a chance, they need an opportunity. And uh, the way things are going, you know, shortchanging the teachers, shortchanging the schools, shortchanging the kids, um, the future doesn't look too bright if we're not fighting for that. You know, so I'm painting this, this kid, this cool kid, you know, and uh, trying to make him, you know, look happy that he's going to school he's gonna have his backpack ready to go to school prepared for school and I see a bunch of kids that really like school yeah there's a few like you know that don't like school but you know if, if someone changes that and changes the their their way of, of thinking of how these kids are being taught and you know make it fun for them too um, they'll end up liking school so yeah that's what I'm painting this kid little Mexican boy from the community. Um, right now, with all the teacher strikes, uh, the teacher strikes and the, the school system is all torn down, people forget that, you know, this, this is our future. These kids, these kids are our future. And, you know, if we can't have professional teachers, instructors teaching these kids, are they supposed to better themselves in the future? They're struggling now. They're struggling now in society. And they're being taught with their, with their, um, you know, with their modern process of schooling and stuff like that. And, and if they're struggling now, and they're struggling now, how are they supposed to be better in the future? So they have to change, make changes now. And that's what the teachers are, are fighting for. Trying to trying to make it better for the kids in the future. You know, I was one of those kids. I, I went I went through that that public school system. You know, some teachers of you know they, they don't give a rat's ass about you. But there's a few that really cared and actually want to teach you and make you better a better person. And we need more teachers like that. There's still a lot of issues. Uh, you know, I I always felt that uh, you know working and also in the public uh, school systems myself you know people think that every every school gets the same amount of money and every area gets the same amount of money and the, and uh, all the teachers teach the same and it's false you know you go to these rich communities and they have better better schooling systems they have better instructors and teachers they have better equipment and uh, to me it's not fair how, how are we um, or my people are how are we supposed to get out of this community out of these um, low poverty um, cities if, if our own government is not providing the proper money and fundings for these schools for these teachers to teach properly for the for the future you know they i feel like these kids are are being left behind and the ones that don't even need some of this money get most of the money you know all this a bunch of these charter schools and stuff like that i don't know it, it, it's, it's not fair for these kids for the for these kids in the community you know, some of these parents, they don't, they don't know. Some of them do know, you know, but, you know, a lot of these parents work two, three jobs. They don't have time to be going to every single meeting and fighting for, for their kids' uh, schooling and their future. So it's not fair. Somebody has to step up and, and, and fight for these kids. The reason why, you know, I, I painted this, this, this art piece is, uh, um, you know, this kid represents, you know, like the, the community, you know, here in the east side, you know, Boy Heights. Um, it represents, you know, my people, my brothers, my friends, 
you know, that, that kid was once me, you know, he, he, he's eager to go to school, he wants to go to school, you know, he, he just needs that opportunity, he needs somebody to, to, to teach him, and uh, he, he wants to better himself in the future, you know, we, we have to uh, remind ourselves that, that these kids are going to be our future. My name is Oscar Ramirez, I'm a local LA artist. I'm painting out of this art studio here in uh, Boyle Heights, East LA area. Uh, stop by anytime, say hi. Uh, I'm under Art Underworld on Instagram, follow me there.